If you haven't guessed it already, today we're gonna be staying clean and creative and we're gonna be making music from this. What's up guys? Welcome to Hertz on Hertz. My name is Tarek and in this episode I'm gonna be showing you how to make music from a bottle of hand sanitizer. Now if you just want to enjoy the music, I've left a timestamp down in the description so you can just skip ahead. Otherwise, let's dive right in. Oh, and if you like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so first things first, I synced up the audio from my field recorder with the audio from the camera and the video. And I'm going to go through the samples and pick what I like and what I don't like. Now I've recorded many things all with the hand sanitizer, so all kinds of clicks and uh, different sounds that I can get from the bottle. And I made sure just to use one bottle, so this is all I'm using to get my sounds. Now I'm gonna go ahead and chop up these samples and delete whatever I don't need. And I'm keeping two tracks just because it's easier for me to keep track of the audio and video. So if anything gets out of sync, it's easier for me this way. And I'm going to go ahead and go through the rest. So I'm probably going to use one of these, not, not all of them. I'll get to choose which one of it later. I like this click, this one not so much. That's a good one. I also like this. What I did here is just poured a little bit of sanitizer and tried to get it back in the bottle to get that, that squishy sound. Yeah, I like that. Now here I'm trying to get some, some kind of sound that I can use for a kick. And as usual, I like to keep my mouse pad just to get a lower kind of thud and not the contact of the bottle with the wooden table. So I'm going to choose one of them. Probably, yeah, probably this. So this is going to be my kick. Moving forward. This I like, this I like. So different kind of sounds. I'm going to go ahead and go through them and jump to the next step. Okay, so I've gone ahead and chosen all my samples and built a kind of a basic beat with them. And I'm going to divide them into different tracks a bit later on. Now I'm just trying to get kind of a, the basic groove going. So this is what I have. Okay, so a few things happening here. Now I haven't processed things much yet. I just did a couple of things I'm gonna show you. So I have a denoiser going on on the main uh, track just to get rid of any extra noise. It's not doing much. It's just um, really reducing a little bit of the hisses and the sounds that I don't want from my field recorder. I've also added a compressor. I'm using the Wolf compressor. Now this is made by um, the people behind Wolfpack. If you don't know them, definitely check them out. They have an awesome YouTube channel. They're a great band, one of my favorites. And they also uh, develop some plugins that I absolutely love. This is one of them. It's not doing much right now. It's just a parallel compression just to uh, make my sounds louder and hear them a bit more in context, a bit more compressed. Um, but I'm gonna divide them later, so we'll get to that. Okay, now here I have basically two phases of the groove. One of them is, is a bit simple. And the other one gets a bit more complex. So I'm adding more sounds to it. I also forgot to mention that for the kick sound that I chose, I ended up um, basically lowering it 12 semitones or an octave just to get a lower kind of sound. So here it is without transpose. Doesn't sound much like a kick. Um, with the transpose, it's... Yeah. Now it's a kick. 
So here we go. Not a very complex progression, actually it's really simple, um, a baseline to go with it. The hats, I basically triggered them uh, from a MIDI clip, I sampled the sound of the glass and then added it to Ableton Simpler and then I froze it and added some reverb. Again, nothing too complex. I'm not very happy with the arrangement, but obviously this is just the first phase. I'm gonna divide all these sounds into separate layers and have every sample processed a bit differently to suit my needs. I am also gonna change a bit of the arrangement. So jumping ahead again. Okay, so here we are in the final session. Uh, now, as you can tell, I prepare these ahead of time. I don't record everything on the tutorials just because it takes a lot more time than <laughs> then you guys are probably willing to spend. But in case you guys want to see a more in-depth tutorial, definitely let me know in the comment and I'll make sure to do that the next time. So I've uh, divided all of my samples in different groups, what I'm using for the snares, what I'm using for the kick. The processing is still very minimal, so I still have that Wolf compressor going on the kick uh, for the snares as well as the group. Um, I've also uh, divided my percussions into two different sections. So here's the first one. And I divide them this way just so it's easier for me to put the video together in uh, Premiere. So as you can tell, I've muted the kick and snare and I've separated the kick on its own, the kick and snare and the percussions. Um, now I've routed all my percussions to a group and added Ableton's drum bus uh, to them just to drive them a bit harder and glue everything together. I've also added some uh, EQs obviously to each different track. Okay, so here's the arrangement. I kept the intro as is because I like how it introduces the sounds separately before they come together with the music. So we still have that going. And then we jump into the beat with a kick and snare on their own. A few crashes here and there just to build moments. Okay, so as I've mentioned uh, in my previous video, my goal with this channel is to kind of keep everything sounding um, the way it does. I'm not going out of my way to process things and use them in a completely different context. Uh, my goal is to use these sounds and make music with what I get. So the processing is minimal. I haven't done much uh, to any of them. Um, except a few EQs and compressors here and there. I've also uh, added uh, some whistling. So for the whistling, I, um, I recorded two tracks of myself uh, whistling and I panned them hard left and hard right. And the third track that I recorded, I kept in the center, but then I didn't like how much noise I was getting. The noise floor was too high um, with me recording on my um, field recorder. So I ended up using a contact library with a human whistle and I kept that in the center. Um, I'll, I'll play them for you so you get a sense of what's happening. So this is all together. This is on it. This on its own is the contact library with a bit of reverb and delay. And these are my actual whistles. Split into left and right just to get a wider stereo image and um, to, to kind of have that stack to make it sound a bit nicer. I also forgot to mention that I made the bass a bit simpler in the break, what I'm calling a break, and added some more percussions from the sounds that I used. So here's the break for you. I 
as you can tell i removed the kick uh, as it's a break and added some more percussions added the first section of the percussions uh, with the new ones uh, once and then the second the, and then the second section once also with the new percussions And that's the whole thing. So I'm going to jump into Premiere, put everything together, and we'll check out the result together. Let's go.